I scrambled hard to get in another European final preview now that it's all so condensed together it is not that quick to get to it but hey I managed I crunched the data I got all the interesting facts that you will need and you will hopefully have it on the day of the final and I'm trying to tomorrow to get the, to the same thing for the Champions League final I had another pickle to solve which jersey do I wear well I decided for now for Sevilla. So let's get right to it, to the preview of the Europa League final to be played this Friday evening in Cologne. Um, with the big final we have Sevilla against Inter, which is uh, I think a very good final uh, to have, as, as we'll see, two uh, good names in Europe and two deserving teams if you look at the Europa League performance. The referee will be Makeli from the Netherlands. It is played, as I said, in Cologne in the Rhein Energie Stadion and uh, it happens this Friday, August 21st at 9 o'clock. So let's look at these two opponents and see if we can find anything to distinguish, to distinguish them. Uh, first, the road. We had Sevilla who came through the Europa League, uh, had to do it the hard way. They had a rather favorable group, I have to say. We made Karabakh, who they beat twice. Apoel, they only lost, but that was in the last group game where they already were uh, qualified. And Dudelange, also two, three goal wins, although the away win, they conceded two goals. They have not conceded many goals, three goals uh, here and then two goals more in the knockout stage. Where against Cluj, this was a nail biter. Um, they had a 1 1 away from home and then 0 0, and Cluj actually scored the late goal that supposedly was the winner, but it was taken. Uh, it did not count. So um, that was the scare. But since then, Sevilla looked good. Roma, complete performance. They totally dominated the Roma, a game that I thought will be much closer. Uh, and with a 2 0 win against Wolves, also uh, they needed to be patient, 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 patient. Got the late winner, also a penalty safe uh, early on in the game. And against Manchester United, they had to turn it around. Manchester United got also a penalty that was con converted, but uh, they get the equals through Suzo and then uh, ride a little bit their luck. But in the end, defensively sound and offensively, they take, exploit the weaknesses of United and get a 2-1 win to be in the final. Inter had to take the route via the Champions League where, yeah, they probably should have made it into the knockout stages. Two results, three results actually stick, stick out the prevent them from the one one at home to Slavia uh, was a first damper. Um, the big one, I think, was they were 2-0 up in Dortmund where they, uh, at half at halftime, they managed to lose that one, 3-2. And then on the last match day, they just needed to beat a second-string Barcelona squad, which now, with knowing how bad Barcelona is, this is really not good, good news. They managed to lose this 2-1 at home. So in the Europa League, the goal had no trouble with Lula Goretz. Uh, it was the first time I saw a San Siro. Uh, and without spectators there so that was weird and then also um, a little bit lucky at the beginning but in the end a uh, complete performance to get a 2-0 win over Getafe Leverkusen much more dominant as goal and shows in Schach that they finally scored the goals so let's see um, who those teams are let's compare the honors and from that you can already tell Inter is the bigger team uh, they have 18 league titles where Sevilla has only one and that one is from 45 46 so a long 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 time ago into the recent titles were five in a row between 2005 and 10 and now they challenge uh, again as we'll see with a little bit of luck they probably could have won the title this year already uh, cup titles a little a little bit closer uh, Inter actually I was surprised that they have not won the cup more often. There's something with the teams from Milan, the cup competitions are not theirs. Um, Sevilla is a cup team, although most of the cup teams came uh, almost prehistoric times before 1950, but then two in the early 2000s. And the early 2000s is also where Sevilla first made a mark on Europe. They win twice in a row from 2005 and 2007, the Europa League, and then a triple. Uh, from uh, 14 to 16, so 2013, 14 to uh, 15, 16, they win three times in, in in a row, which is kind of what makes me, a, a full disclosure, um, 
that was that is in a, in a way it makes me made me root against Sevilla over those past few years. I don't know if it will make me root against Sevilla in the final. Inter has won. It looks like three competitions, but it's first the European Cup. Uh, they made their mark on, on Europe, winning twice in a row from um, 1963, 64, 65. They won also the Champions League with the famous treble in ten, uh, 9 10. So that uh, that happened. And then they also won in the 90s three times the precursor to the UEFA Cup, uh, to the Europa League, the UEFA Cup. Uh, first in 91, then in 94, and then in 98. So Inter having a whole lot more trophies, especially winning leagues. Inter is a giant of the game. Interesting enough, the two teams have never met on a competitive stage. I think the only thing I could find was a friendly a long time, to time ago in Amsterdam. It was 0-0. Zero, zero. So uh, we cannot say how they would match up against each other. However, we can look at the form curves. And this is now really since the Corona break, because before that really that doesn't count. And what I did is I took the results. I have an algorithm um, that I uh, developed a few years ago where you take the uh, betting odds and so on and compare the performances to what would have been expected and then I average it over five games kind of smooth out a little bit the spikes and this is what we got for Sevilla um, again uh, the, all the games that happened before Corona don't figure in because I'm weighing it uh, by time and it's exponentially decay so if we have a three month break doesn't really weigh in they started bright with a big derby win over Betis and then they had a kind of a rough, uh, a, they never lost as, as we'll see, but there were a lot of draws in there, they kind of did not play all, all the well, but they climb, 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 and now uh, get, getting the Europa League, uh, you, you, you see the kind of the flat, they finished already the league on a high note with winning uh, important games late and then in the Europa League they really go and we get a current form of 100% on average 74% so that's pretty pretty impressive I have, have had to say. Inter not so much, I mean they're also currently on a super form, probably the best form they had all season because that's the one one thing Inter lost the title probably early in the Corona break already with some uh, uh, sloppy results you know 3-3 three, three against Sassuolo, losing at home 2-1 to uh, Bologna, uh, many draws like against Verona then the, uh, or, or uh, I guess Fiorentina, those are points that you end, the, end up missing if they can get the win there it was on only point. Yes, Juve got the three uh, on the with two match may, may matches ago. But if Inter could have uh, stepped it up, they might have challenged for a title. You can see how strong they finished, and we will see that uh, in some other facts uh, as, as well. So they were continuously climbing, and at the moment they're hitting their peak form. Uh, the five 0 against Schachter definitely left a dent in everything. Also note, Inter did not have a big break, they went straight from uh, playing Serie A into the U Europa League and kind of hit hitting the stride now, uh, which maybe is the one Italian team where it actually worked to keep things going that way. Uh, current form, as I say, is 100% average form, 55%. As I said, it was a shaky season uh, for most of the time for Inter. Um, now let's some, uh, look at some game notes. Uh, Sevilla is an unbelievable 20 games unbeaten. They're a hard team to break down. They can be a very frustrating team. I always call Sevilla the most frustrating team in Europe. But yeah, uh, 20 games unbeaten and 11 wins among those 20. So uh, that's pretty strong form for Sevilla. They also had nine clean sheets. So they're not give giving up a lot of goals. They're defensively sound. Offensively though, maybe not as great. Uh, they rarely score in both halves, for instance. Uh, when they do. They also have never lost a European final. I think this is a staggering uh, stat and you never should bet against Sevilla. Let's see later. And another interesting one, a Spanish team in a final against a non-Spanish team has not lost since 2001. This was uh, when Bayern beat Valencia and also I think the same th uh, season Liverpool beat Alaves. That was the last time that Spanish teams lost to another uh, to a non-Spanish team in a European final. So uh, those are stats that really point strongly towards Sevilla. Inter on the other hand, they have now six consecutive wins, which is a bit more than Sevilla has and 11 games unbeaten. So also not that bad uh, overall. They um, 
have only one goal conceded in the last 77 matches and I think in Europa League in every match Lukaku has made a goal. Uh, they had six ones and one draw uh, in the last 77 matches. So um, the draw, obviously the one against uh, Fiorentina and the one goal conceded was the one against Leverkusen. So quite impressive defensively and we saw it against Schachter they were defensively very very sound. Uh, it's the first European final since 2010 when they won it in the Champions League. So uh, that's uh, a big stat and also another one that I cannot really believe is the and I said it in the previous video is the first Italian team in a UEFA Cup or Europa League final since 99 when Parma won it uh, against Marseille the in the 90s I think there was every year except for one there was an Italian team in the final this is unbelievable this is un unbelievable that there was such a cut uh, with the new millennium uh, projected kids, uh, it's not that surprising. Sevilla will play in their home churches, probably with white pants and black socks, which means that Inter will play also in the... I'm a little bit so, so surprised in this Europa League campaign, they have not used their newly released jersey. They went with the old one, which I personally do not like, except for the colors are nice, but I do not like this slanted thing in, in India. That would have looked nice. If you have the slanted thing, and the top of uh, bottom white is would have been made a great away jersey i have to say but a home jersey to me it doesn't it doesn't work it just looks odd in every regard i would imagine them with black pants and white socks i think this is the look that we will have in the final another qu big question is who will win it i'm not gonna give a prediction this time but let's see what 538 says 538 says it's a very close final with inter very slight favorites and I also looked at the bookmakers, it's very similar there. We have that the most balanced line is 0.25, so this is kind of um, points to also Inter being favored, winning on average with 0.25 goals. Uh, sort of, it's a little bit more shifted. And we expect, yeah, between two and three goals, which is also kind of surprising. Because I know both teams are, can be defensively quite sound, so let's see where, where it goes. So to finish out this video, I changed to the Inter jersey to have both teams in there. And yeah, please let me know who you think is uh, your favorite, favorite in, in the final. As I said, Inter is a team that I for years did not like. There is something to like in this Inter team. I really like Lukaku, I like this uh, Barella and Sensi. There is something about this Inter, Inter team that I find kind of likable. Um, but on, on the other side, yes, there is Sevilla. Um, you know, I think my Milan fan wants to go for Sevilla, but there is Suso. Uh, the Italy fan in me wants that an Italian team finally wins a European Cup again. Does it have to be Inter? Yeah, I would have loved another team. So I'm rather split and I probably will watch this as a neutral unless I surprise myself again. So let's see all about that. But I want to know who is your fa favorite. Um, I want that you give me a thumbs up if you enjoyed this video. Subscribe to my channel if you want to see more videos like this. And I will talk to you soon. Bye. Hey there. I hope you enjoyed this video. And if you did, here are some videos and playlists that would be of interest to you too. Also, please consider subscribing to my channel as it will keep you updated with all things that are rotating in my soccer universe. With that, I wish you a wonderful day. Bye.